There's talk of a Santa Claus rally. How different that sounds to about a week ago. Is it a bear trap instead? Let's have a look at your highlights of the week and mine. The stock market update. Now, what you see here is, I'll make myself smaller. What you see here is forward price to earnings ratios. In other words, this is the valuation of companies based on their current share price as a multiple of their future profits. Basically, red is bad, all right, and green is good. So energy, undervalued, banks, uh, as you can see, capital markets, banks, insurance as well, telecom services, quite a lot, which is cheap. It's undervalued, uh, as you can see there. That is a measure that you're getting things at a relatively cheaper share price compared to future profits. It's a simplistic approach, but it's one that's there. Now, I'm going to go through a bunch of stocks in this presentation. And those of you who follow me on alpishpatel.com forward slash links, which gives you my YouTube and Telegram, will know what I'm about to say, which is I don't just look at the charts. I actually have a look at valuation, revenue growth, dividend deals, cash flow, momentum, Sortino, Alpha. As a hedge fund manager, we look at a hell of a lot of things in the fund, okay? It's as simple as that. Now, let's have a look at how the markets have performed in the past week. Well, unexpectedly, I certainly didn't expect it, ton of greens. Now, this is off the back of earnings. It's also off the back of the fact that the Fed has taken a pause in raising interest rates, and that's partly because employment isn't growing as fast as expected and inflation has decelerated somewhat. So the market is saying, great, no more interest rate rises. They're reading that as a positive for the moment. The market has the uh, memory and attention span of a gnat. So that might not last for long and tomorrow's and uh, actually Monday's a new week. Okay. Exchange traded funds, how have they done over the past month? Well, pretty much everything is uh, in green, particularly gold, particularly Brazil and Japan, not two countries I've looked at recently in terms of investments. I might do a separate broadcast on that, so do like and follow uh, if you want to keep uh, aware of those, and particularly my LinkedIn page and YouTube page you'll want to look at, and probably my Telegram. Anyway, it's all on alpishbill.com forward slash links. Energy and utilities as well in terms of funds. Now, I prefer exchange-traded funds if you're going to go for funds, but remember, if you're going for funds, you're going for funds because you want lower volatility, you want less risk usually. Otherwise, you might as well go for individual securities. How have the market's done year to date? Well, the NASDAQ is up 36%. It peaked at 44%, and those on my great investments program from the start of the year, who were NASDAQ heavy, managed about 100% return there. If they were more S&P 500 heavy, which are people who are a little bit older, a bit more cautious, then they managed uh, in by about July about a 30 to 40% return on their pensions. Now, that's unusual. That is not typical. And of course, since then, if those who joined after July, they had fewer stocks to pick from, but they only need to pick 15 to 40, and they've got 12 months to go because we hold for 12 months and then renew. So it's not been a bad year. It's actually been a lot better than I thought it was going to be this year. I didn't expect it to be this good a year. Speaking of what's been doing good, these are the top 10 S&P 500 performers over the past month. Now, I'm not going to go through them in this video. For those of you on my private channel, because you're in the Great Investments Program, have a look on Telegram for more in-depth coverage. S&P, uh, sorry, FTSE 350, so that's the FTSE 100, 100 largest UK companies, and then the next 250. These are the best performers over the past month. You can see them there. Okay. As for the S&P 500, if I zoom in, it's still in a downward channel, all right? Even though it's now positively broken upwards, back below its lower support, right, which has become a resistance and it's broken right in there, but it's still in a downward trend. So do not be fooled. That could be a bear trap. You've seen it before here where it moves up in a downward trend, then goes down, moves up in a downward trend, then goes down, moves down in an upward trend. And so until it breaks that upper band, you can't say it's got a bull market. And by the way, even when it often does break that, it then comes back, touches it and goes up. So we've got ample time before we can say, yeah, we're through the worst of it for the market and hence why we might get this Christmas rally. Okay. By the way, in terms of the technicals, and as I said, I look at fundamentals as well, uh, that's going sideways. I'd look at these in a way that the textbooks don't. Uh, and what's seasonality? Well, November does tend to be one of the best months for the market. It's actually the second best month in the last eight years for the market. So let's not be too surprised 
that this is turning out to be a strong November. Uh, it's statistically bound to be. Now, that's what I expect with the FTSE 100, I'm afraid. So not as positive as many people are. Now, Apple, got a base there. It's had a good set of results, right? If we zoom in, you can see that. Like I said, if you want to watch this on my on my YouTube, go to alpishpatel.com forward slash links because you'll see it more clearly there. But that's Apple. And as you can see with that, sideways on the monthly uh, MACD, which is this one, seasonality-wise, that's what it looks like, and that's what the banks are saying. Now, three decisions. Do I buy more? If you put a gun to my head, I'd be willing to now because I think after these results, it's probably going to do that. However, I've already got a big holding and I'm continuing to hold it. Would I sell? No. So we'll call that the Apple strategy, okay? That's where we are. That's what the analysts think is the upside if you go from there to there. Alphabet, I'm going to take a similar strategy. We'll call it the Apple strategy, right? We're going to do the Apple strategy with Alphabet uh, for the same reasons. It looks very similar. Now with Microsoft, I would buy more and I've made a note to buy more. Okay, and that's because this is where the monthly MACD is. There's still some room to run. And when it's done that in the past, you can see it's had a hell of a run uh, upwards. And so I'm not saying it's going to do this again and go somewhere up here in the next 12 months, but it is looking attractive uh, to me. Famous last words. All right, that's where we are with it. So Microsoft is one of those which are risk rewards, fundamentals, everything else. I'm going to buy more of and I don't mind having exposure to. Okay, now Amazon, uh, same as Microsoft, same strategy as Microsoft. And I would uh, call that the Microsoft strategy. I would buy more of this at the moment. Of course, I continue reviewing it. That's why you watch my broadcasts. Where we are with Amazon. Now, Disney is not one I hold. It's, it's one of the bellwethers. And I wanted to show it because it shows you how badly things can go for big companies and how poor the market is at pricing. For those who think the market's great at pricing, well, how can it be that in one year and then you know that the year before? So what this shows is, well, is it worth buying right now? All these banks think so. I don't. I'd rather wait. Uh, and I know it's oversold, but I'd rather wait. Uh, I might never get in might not suit me but i just wanted to let you know as a bellwether i want to cover some of those now the nvidia strategy is this it's overbought okay it's had a big massive run up if it drops 10 percent, you might sell 20 percent of it because you're risk averse or 30 percent, or 40 or 50 depending on your risk appetite that's bespoke to you i'd only be able to tell you in hindsight what the right amount is but the future isn't foretold in the markets we don't know, you know, it's not as if you get a time machine or do a seance, you know it's going to do this, and therefore I can say to you, oh, just keep hold of it. Uh, we can only go by our own uh, risk appetites. So that's where we are with NVIDIA. Tesla, as you know, was a special situation for my great investments program. You're welcome. Uh, students made a lot of money, and then I said I've got out of it because I got a bit risk averse, and I wanted to ease back on uh, some of my equity holdings. That's where we are. You might say, well, that's premature, but I have a 12-month holding period. Then review, remember. And this didn't even meet my approved filtered list because uh, it was too volatile. Uh, so that's why it was a special situation. Okay, so that's Tesla. Meta, I wouldn't buy more of it now because it is a bit overbought, looks a bit toppy. Okay, uh, so for me, I'm continuing to hold, uh, but I wouldn't buy more. And there might come a time when I sell and uh, implement the NVIDIA strategy. All right, so there's Meta service now. Now, this one's difficult because do I, do I buy more? Uh, and it's like Microsoft and Amazon. And it might be that I buy more carefully uh, uh, because it can be volatile. It can be volatile, as you've seen previously here. And what I don't want to happen is have an overexposure due to leverage on that, uh, either personally or in the fund. Okay, so that's where we are with service. Now, Cisco, just want to show this again, another bellwether. That's the direction we're looking at. It's a bit slower and a bit more flat. Uh, I should zoom in for those who want to see it there. Okay, so that's your Cisco. Uh, and there's Netflix. Now, I'm showing Netflix. I don't own it, but the reason I'm showing Netflix is because it had a good set of results. And so I've put it as a special situation, and that's what the banks think. And it looks pretty straightforward as a good special situation. So you might say, well, why don't you own it? Well, I can't buy everything, can I? Uh, that's my wife's job. Okay, so that's where we are with that. 
Uh, and it, well, we'll keep an eye on it, but it's a popular name, so it's a good one to keep an eye on, isn't it? Now, several things I want you to do. Uh, have a look at my campaign for a million uh, com. You'll also see my YouTube links on there, my Telegram, my LinkedIn links. Follow me on tele um, on LinkedIn. And have a look at the Great Investments Program, which will particularly be useful to you if you are a cash-rich professional and time poor, like a dentist, a lawyer, an accountant, or if you're an entrepreneur who sold their business, uh, or in the third category of people we have on there are the people who have just been disappointed with, well, the names that have come up recently are Casanova and St. James's Place. They're just fed up with the performance. They don't think they've got a decent performance and they'd rather take more control of it and do it themselves. So they want to have the data and they want the hand-holding and they want to be shown what, what might be more suitable for their portfolio. They pick it themselves, control it themselves. So do have a look at the Great Investments Program as well. Uh, and that's it. Thank you all very much.